Today I'm going to edit the same photo in Lightroom Photo Lab and Affinity Photo. Let's see the difference. Also don't forget to join my live stream tomorrow. Here are some thoughts about Lightroom. It is very quick, it is very intuitive and also with the presets you can save the styles and apply to your other photos so you have a consistency in your photo art creation. Also Lightroom is really good at adjusting highlights and shadows. The sliders for texture and clarity are very effective. Also Lightroom has different color modes you can work in and they are very effective to create different styles. Another thing that I really like about Lightroom is the smart masks that you can create. You can click on subject and it will figure out what the main subject of your picture is or the sky. This makes working with that software very quick and very efficient. One of the big downsides of Lightroom, of course, is the monthly subscription. But if you get it in a bundle together with Photoshop, Camera Raw, Lightroom Classic, Lightroom and all the apps you can get for your smartphone and tablet, the deal is actually really good. Let's start out this comparison with Lightroom Classic. I want, of course, to brighten that image up a bit. Let's go like that. Then one thing that Lightroom is really good at is recovering highlight and adjusting shadows. So I can bring my highlight back as you can see here the sky is coming back but now the rest of the image is bright and when I adjust the shadows this is actually just adjusting the shadows not all of the dark parts of the image so can I bring this up here a little bit like so actually it's close to normal so let's go with this bring down the white values let's see about the black values okay let's leave it like that texture Clarity can be really useful. Look at the ground here. When I move up clarity, what is happening to the ground and the details in the image. So that can be really useful, but I don't want to have that on all of the image. So what I'm doing here is I'm going up to mask. And the cool thing is in Lightroom, you have smart masks. So here I can click on select subject. Now this is not a person, it's a chair, but look at what Lightroom is doing. It takes a second and it has selected the chair for me. Over here, we have selected a little bit of that flower but no problem. I can click here on Substract Brush and then I can simply use my brush. I use my mouse wheel to adjust the size of the brush. No extra buttons needed. And then I can simply brush these areas out that I don't want to have in my selection. Just like that. Look how easy that is. Now that we go back to the mask, we have a lot of adjustments, not all of them, but a lot of them, and you can play around with them. So for example, here now, I can go with clarity and you see how I get more structure into my chair, more clarity. Let's go here with some more texture too, and then have a look at the brightness, a little bit more brightness, a little bit more contrast maybe too. Okay, so that is already pretty good, but I also want to have the ground here a little bit brighter. So for that, let's create a second mask here with a brush and then simply brush over the area down here a little bit. Give me more brightness down here. Give me more clarity down here. Look at that. Beautiful. Some more texture maybe. It's pretty nice. And then of course you can readjust the mask if you want you can paint in there a little bit more actually let's bring everything down here to a little bit more brightness and then i'm going to darken that afterwards again no problem all right so that already looks pretty good let's go here create another mask for a linear gradient pull it up like this and then you can push this outward so only the softer part is in here and i'm going to reduce the exposure down here again but now, of course, I have to control that I can move that around because I just want to have some more light down here on the beginning of the chair. Now, here's another trick that you can do. Let's create another mask, select subject. Now I can go in here, click on subtract, linear gradient, and I can go like this. And you can see that this now will create a mask that is just inside of the chair and only applied over here because that part is reduced from the chair. So that means now when I reduce the exposure, I can make that part of the chair a little bit darker than the side up here. And this is like digitally relighting the scene. 
So you can see that it's really quick and easy. Let's click on the masking tool. So we are going back to our normal adjustments and let's play around with some more settings here. For example, as you know, I'm a huge fan of vignettes. So down here we have the vignette tool. Let's make the outside of the image a little bit darker. So we have more center focus. Then go up here, bring some more vibrance in here bring maybe a little bit more saturation already looks pretty good and then you have color profiles now those are a little bit like lots in a certain way there is some from adobe but then you can also click and on browse and get even more and here you have for example this one which is called modern six and this gives really beautiful, interesting colors, but you can go simply mouse over them and they will give you a preview of what is going on in your image. Let's close that. And one thing I also want to have is these flowers here a little bit brighter. Let's go back into the mask, have my brush here, make the brush smaller and then paint a little bit over these flower heads here. And then there we go. Bring up the brightness bring down the highlights a little bit, bring me some more textures for the flowers. And that I would say is it for our adjustments. Here are some thoughts about DxO Photo Lab. It's a very capable software and I like the analog style it has. Also, you can choose from different camera bodies and also have a small selection of different analog films you can apply to your photo. You can create presets and with the Elite version, you have some advanced features like deep prime noise reduction, which is very effective. Also, you get access to an effect that is called Clear View Plus and is extra extremely effective to get more room and more structure into your picture. Downsides of Photolab are that the preview often is a little bit blurred unless you are at 100%. This makes it a bit difficult to adjust things like micro contrast and texture in your images. And also that you don't see the effect of noise reduction 100% unless you export the image. In here, I'm going to Smart Lighting. It's one of my favorite sliders. This will adjust the image based on what is found in the image. That is very useful, as you can see here. Very quick, just one slider does a lot of stuff for you at the same time. Really beautiful. Now you also have your contrast and micro contrast. I really love micro contrast because this gives the image a lot more detail. It's similar to what you get with texture and clarity in Lightroom. So let's have this a little bit up here and then we can bring down the highlights a little bit. Let's look here, the shadows, we can bring those up a bit, but you can see in comparison to Lightroom, the shadow tool here takes everything that is a little bit darker, not just the shadows. In this regard on adjusting shadows, Lightroom is the king. Let's go with the mid tones here. We can apply that a little bit and then we also have here our color adjustments. For example, we have vibrancy and saturation, same as in the other program. And you have here, this is a special for photo lab. You have generic rendering, but then also other rendering types. But on top of that, you can go here with camera bodies. And in here, you have a long list of different cameras from different companies that you can apply to your photo and see how that looks. Right now, I'm going to go with the generic rendering. Down here, we have our white balance, of course. We can, for example, try to make this image a little bit warmer. That might be nice. So that already is pretty good. Now, again, here we have some local adjustments. They function a little bit like masks. And when you click on that, when you right click now over the image, you get a selection of tools. You have a brush here, then you have an auto masking brush. You can have control points, you have control lines, you have gradient filters, and of course, erase and reset. So let's go here with the auto mask. I'm going to paint in my chair here because here we do not have have the ability to just click select subject. I have to hold my control key and then use the mouse wheel to make my brush bigger and smaller. And now I can just paint over that. But you can see how much more time this uses 
to make a simple selection of that chair. So now that we have this down here, we have our adjustments. And with that, for example, I can make the chair darker and brighter if I want to. I can also go in here for different details like the sharpness and the blur. Let's make this a little bit sharper here too. And then you can go in here for micro contrast, add some more contrast to that, add some more full contrast and micro contrast to that image. Let's reduce the midtones here a little bit. So let's create a second mask in here and we are going to use the auto mask again. And you can see here when I have a bigger brush and I brush over this and I'm not exactly very precise with what I'm doing, the auto mask is going to save me from that. But I'm using the adjustments. You can see that this is actually not going to be on the sky. It's just going to be on the chair. So it can actually also make this side of the chair a little bit darker. Let's create another mask here for our flower heads real quick like that. There we go. You can see that right now the tools are in the way of painting the mask here. So hitting the E button, you can see here show and hide equalizer. This will hide these tools and now I can go over that and I have adjusted that. Hit E again and I can go here and make my flowers brighter and then also give them some more micro contrast in here. Finally, let's use a normal brush, make it really big down here on the ground and then bring this part up, add more contrast to it, add more micro contrast to that, reduce the vibrancy a little bit down here like so. And then I want to zoom out here. We can again create here a gradient filter like that. Move it up a little bit like so. Bring down our brightness in that area. So now we have our local adjustments. Let's bring this back to full view. Go here to colors and here we have our color channels, but you can also color pick if you want to. We have the blue of the sky so you can see I can move this around. Move this a little bit over to have a similar teal look as in the other picture like so. Let's go to detail. Here we have denoise technology. You have high quality prime and deep prime. Deep prime is part of the elite version. You can see high quality is not that good. Prime is already pretty good as you can see here and deep prime is even a little bit better but prime already does a pretty good job with that. Here are some thoughts about Affinity Photo. It's of course the most versatile tool of them all. You can use it with hundreds of layers, adjustments, filters, everything you want to do. Affinity Photo is especially good when you want to go really deep artistically, work with a lot of layers, have overlays, a lot of effects in their adjustment layers and want to go really deep and intricate with your photo. On the other hand, this software is made for working on individual photos. So it doesn't really allow you to create presets from your edits. And this also means you can't apply them to a series of photos after Afterwards. The raw editing is severely limited in the developer persona and even in the normal photo persona the adjustment of shadows and highlights is not as good as in Photolab or Lightroom. Now we are in Affinity Photo and when you open up a RAW, you are in the developer persona. Here you have some basic tools on the side, exposure, enhance, white balance, stuff like that. Now we let's bring up the exposure here. So we have a nice and bright image and click on develop because usually I do the rest here in my layers with the adjustment layers. What I like to use is to use the unsharp mask and actually use that stronger than intended because you can see this in Affinity Photo gives me a similar effect. So that's pretty nice. And in Affinity Photo, every of these live filters and adjustments has a mask built into that. This is really useful for me because now I can go here to layers invert. So the effect is applied to nothing. Zoom out again. And now I can simply use a normal paintbrush and white will make the effect visible and black will make the effect invisible. I can adjust the size and the hardness of my brush by holding Ctrl and Alt, clicking and moving my mouse to the right as the size, moving my mouse up and down 
is the hardness. So with that, as you can see, I have a big brush. And now let's make this a little bit bigger and a little bit softer. I can paint this down here onto the ground in the foreground. Then I make my brush a little bit smaller like that. And I can also paint that onto my chair here to give this also a little bit more structure although you have to make sure you don't go over the edge because this is just a brush it's not a auto mask it's not a smart brush or something like that if you go over the edge it will be visible so this is also why i have my brush here a little bit softer Let's go over these details here. Then also here can see with the flower heads, let's give them some more details also over here. So we bring them out a little bit more. Now, the thing is in Affinity Photo, this is now a mask that is only applied to that single layer. You can, of course, also create masks that are individual masks and you can apply them to groups. So let's actually do that next. When I hold Alt and I click on that adjustment, you can see this is the mask I've painted. This is also helpful to show you where you might have missed something. But on top of that, what I can do with this is when I've seen the mask, let's click on another layer, then click back now hold the control key and click again and this will create a selection of that mask now down here have my mask icon i can click on this and now this has created an individual mask with the same properties control d on the keyboard and now i have an individual mask here that means let's turn this off real quick so we see the image again I can create other adjustments. For example, let's go here with a curve adjustment and then I can right click on the curve adjustment. I can put that into a group. And now when I have a mask layer, let's turn that on again, drag it on here. So you have the short blue line, not the long blue line. This becomes kind of a clipping mask in that regard. And you can see now if I'm using my curve, pulling this down, pulling this up, I'm using the exact same mask for that area. So that can be really useful. So for example, let's pull this down here a little bit, pull that up a bit more, and that will give me some more contrast in that area. We are also able to combine these masks. So in that case, what I want to do here is I create another curve adjustment, but this time outside of the group. Now I click on my mask layer, right click, duplicate like that, and I will pull this up here over my curve layer. Now look at that. That's a pretty interesting trick here. First of all, open up this curve adjustment, pull it down so it's darker like that. Now I'm going to use my gradient tool over here and pull out a gradient as you can see from the top left this is black to white like that this part is dark this part is brighter but i only want to have that on the chair so what i'm going to do here is i turn on my mask again and again i'm pulling it onto my curve layer with the short blue line so now when i turn this on and off you can see that only the side of the chair and in this case also the ground is darker so how do we fix the ground in that case very easy go into the mask hold alt click on the mask so you see what's going in here and then simply take a black brush and paint all of that stuff here out that we don't want to have that we created beforehand like this very easy you see so there we go let's click on another layer so we only see the mask again and then click on Alt again so we have a little bit of a comparison. I would say that's pretty much in the same area. So when we turn this on and off, you can see that only the lower part of that image now is darker. Now for the vignette, I like to create custom vignettes. So let's create another curve adjustment here. I will pull this side down so everything is getting a little bit darker in the image. I'm using Layer Invert. In this case, this is going to invert the mask on my layer using white as a color so I can paint that back in, making my brush very big and very soft at the same time. And then I can simply paint here around the outsides where I feel that I want to have that kind of mask. Here you can see this is going to create a vignette for me. 
Now let's go here for an HSL adjustment, which we find up here. And then again, we have these color dots. Again, select the blue. And again, we can do a little bit of a shift here like this. So we get this kind of teal blue effect in here. Now, overall, I think I want to have a little bit more contrast here. So let's go here and create a brightness and contrast adjustment. Push up the contrast a little bit. Push up the brightness a little bit. Let's see, like so is pretty good. And don't forget about the flowers. We forgot about the flowers. So let's do this real quick. Let's do another brightness and contrast adjustment here real quick and then push that up and then maybe also push this up a little bit. Let's go like that. Invert that layer. Use my paintbrush again, like so, and then hold control and the mouse wheel to zoom in here. And I can simply paint this onto the flowers over here, like so. There's one more over here. So here you can see the three different versions I have created. They are all slightly different. They all have a slightly different expressiveness to them. And when you look closely at the images, you can actually tell the software they have been edited with because Lightroom has that kind of specific look. It's a little bit more digital. It has these specific Adobe colors with them. Photolab, on the other hand, has often a more warm and analog result to it. When you look at the Affinity Photo version, on the other hand, you see a very nice and clean result, but at the same time, the software doesn't add as much of an own note to the image. So this is a more neutral version, but at the same time, you need to have more knowledge and understanding of the software to get the result because there is so many choices and so many tools that are hidden in a lot of different menus. So here's my personal verdict. When I need a quick and beautiful result, I go with Lightroom Classic. When I want to have something that is expressive and analog feeling, I go with Photolab. And when I want to have something where I have full control over everything I'm doing, I go with Affinity Photo. So my workflow usually is that I either start in Photolab to do the raw adjustments and create a nice look and then finish it up in Affinity Photo, or I start out in Lightroom and then finish it off with Nick Collection to add some artistic effects to it. Sometimes I use all three when it's a really deep and intricate edit, so I can use the best of all the three worlds. Please discuss the software choices in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.